What's up mga ka TV? Welcome back to Rodan TV. Now if you're new to my channel, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Now today's lesson is about measure of other position. There are three measures of other position. These are called quantile measure. The first one is the quartile, followed by decile and percentile. Before we will have an actual example, let me just tell you that the quantile measure, specifically the quartile, it allows to divide or it divides the data set into four equal parts, namely quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and quartile four. In fact, quartile four refers to the entire data set already. Now, quartile one means 20% of the data set. Quartile 2 is 50% of the data set. Quartile 3 is 75% of the data set. And finally, quartile 4 is the whole data set. No wonder that quartile 2 is equal to the value of the median. After all, median is the, the middle part of the data set. What are you waiting for? Maka TV, let's go. Let's have an example. Okay, for our example, here is our problem. Angelica recorded the numbers of coffee shops that can cater a certain number of customers or uh, as it is shown in the table. So we have here the number of customers and then we have here the number of coffee shop. Now, these are the next column that needs to be complied or uh, we fill this one out so that we can solve the problem. And you notice the problem as if how many customers you cater if you are looking for the upper quartile value of the distribution. Well, this is our given distribution. Now, first is we have to complete this uh, table. First, I here refers to our class width. So simply that is just 11 minus 1 when you subtract 2 succeeding um, lower limits that gives us 10 that's why our class width is 10 and then also we have here our n and n here is just actually the summation of our uh, observation so we have uh, this case you have 5 plus 8 plus 10 plus 5 plus 3 there you go we have 31 samples now on this particular side here the two columns the class boundaries or the real limit is simply found by subtracting the lower bound the lower limit by 0.5 and then adding 0.5 to the upper boundary for the first class interval so we have 1 minus 0.5 that is 0.5 and then 10 plus 0.5 that is 10.5 the same thing with here, that means to say 11.5 to 20.5. And then for this part here, uh, we have the less than community frequency. That is just simply the community frequency of our given frequencies here. So you have 5, the start with 5, and then to get the next one, that's 5 plus the next uh, frequency 8, we have 13. And then you have plus 10. You have 23 plus 5, that is 28, plus 3, you have 31. And we should end with 31 for the cumulative frequency because that's the total uh, sample. And then completing this column here, we will just simply, uh, we can add actually this one by 10. So, okay, uh, hold on. This is supposed to be 10.5. So sorry for that because it's 11 minus 0.5 that's 10.5 and then to get the lower boundaries here that's plus 10 you have 20.5 plus 10 that's 30.5 plus 10 that is uh, 40.5 and then for the upper boundary we so we do the same thing 20.5 plus our i that's um what's 20.5 plus 10 you have 30.5 and then plus 10 that's 40.5 plus 10 that's 50.5 so we completed already the column so our concern is we will solve now our problem how many customers uh, would you cater if you are looking for the upper quartile value of the distribution okay we have to understand that in order for us to solve for the quartile value or specifically the upper quartile you know there are there are actually three uh, quartile values we have the uh, quartile one also known as the lower quartile that's q sub one and then we have also quartile two which is equivalent to the median 
and then we have quartal three, also known as the upper quartal, equivalent to 75% of the data set. Now, since we're solving for the upper quartal, then that means we're solving for Q sub three. Okay? In order for us to solve the Q sub three, we really needed the right formula. Yes, guys, do not forget to have the right formula. Otherwise, we will never get the right answer. So, let's continue our computation. Okay, so, uh, this is our formula. You notice, we have the formula here, which is Q sub K equals L sub B, or lower boundary, plus K times N divided by 4, divided by 4 because we're solving for quartile. And then minus CF sub B, which is the cumulative frequency before the quartile um, cumulative frequency and then the frequency of that interval that we're looking or we're talking about and then of course we have our i the class width notice that these are actually this the, the values we have lower boundary then we have the cumulative frequency before that interval and then we have the frequency of the given interval and then of course q sub k that's a quartile measure which in this problem we are talking about upper quartile and then there you go our n sample size and then i class width now before we will solve for this one let us identify our value let's start with lb and then cfb followed by f sub q k and then you have n and then we have i so in this case of course um I skip already this one because that's what we're going to solve or that's what's asked in the problem. Let's start with the lower boundary. Now, before we get the lower boundary, you notice that I mentioned here the class interval. So simply, it refers to the class interval where we will locate our upper quartile value of the distribution. Now, how to do that one? We simply use this method. K over 4. Okay, that is to locate... Um, locating the position of our q sub k again location of the q sub k which in this interval here is the q sub k to do that one our k okay well, let's identify first our k uh, by the way in our problem we are solving for k sub 3 because we're looking for the upper quartile remember in the problem we're asked to solve for the upper quartile so we're looking for uh Q sub 3. In other words, our K, okay, let me write it here, K equals 3. We're looking for the upper quartile. And then, of course, our N is uh, here. If I may show you, you have our N, which is 31. That's our sample size. So, here you go. We needed this value. That means to say you have um, our K is 3, and then our n is 31 divided by 4 okay well to the aid of our calculator let's make this a little bit faster 3 times 31 okay then divided by 4 that's 23.25 okay um we will round up this value get the whole number for this one that is 23 so, 23rd, that's the position or the location of our quartile 3 or the upper quartile. And to do that one, that's what we're going to, we're going to uh, locate this position from our table. Okay, let me show you. This is our table. So, you notice, uh, once this quartile uh, value or the location is rounded on, we have this one. But take note, we cannot disregard 0.25. So technically, 23, that's not the location of our uh, upper quartile. Because it says here the upper quartile is found in a 20.25 location. So going back here in our given, for our table, you notice this is 23. Now, assuming that we will use this one, technically we're not going to locate the right, uh, the right upper quartile value. Because 23 in our community frequency does not even reach... In other words, uh, it's lacking uh, to compare with 23.5. So instead, we will get the next value, this data here. Okay, this interval. This is the interval that we are talking about. So what we're going to do from here is we will get this value and then we are assured now that the upper quartile value or the... Um, 
um, quarter three is found in between this interval. But what is the actual value? We will use the formula. Okay? We will continue with our computation. So, we are going to locate all the values here in this part of our in this part of our table. So, let's start with the lower boundary. The lower boundary for this interval is 30.5. So, let's write it down 30.5 and then our community frequency before is actually 23, which is what we said earlier um lacking or not even uh, did not reach 23.25 so we have 23 for that value and then the frequency of, the, of this interval is 5 okay you have 5 and then of course we have our i10 okay now let's substitute our formula in our formula it says here lower boundary which is 30.5 plus of course, our K and divided by 4 is 23.5. We solved it already. So, we'll just copy that one. That's 23.25. Okay. Minus our CF sub B, which is 23. Then, we divide it by our frequency or FQ sub K or F sub QK, which is 5. And then multiply with our i which is 10. And then the rest let our calculator do the process or do the computation. So we have of course 23.25 minus 23 that's 0.25. Okay you have 0.25 uh, divided by 5 times 10 you have 0 0.25. So you have 30.5 plus 0 0.5 and then we add this one plus 30.5 we have 31 that's the upper quartile in other words in this conclusion in this problem um, the upper quartile value is 31 we can now conclude that if you are if you are in the uh, upper quartile if you are in the upper quartile you can cater 31 customers okay that ends uh, this part Meaning to say, based on our problem here, if you happen to be in the upper quartile of the distribution, then uh, with uh, in relation to Angelica's uh, problem, you can cater uh, 31 customers. So that's it. Alright guys, thank you so much. That's our that's the whole process of our computation. I have shown you the step-by-step -step procedure and how to solve for the quartile value of a given distribution. Now, if you have some comments, suggestions, just leave it in the comment section and then let me know what are your uh, feel also with my explanation. With that guys, thank you so much for being with me in this another episode of the Mama Galing Samad. Uh, see you and bye for now.